Welcome once again to the basic series of Vivian Tutorials. In the fifth tutorial, we had a brief look at how to draw and insert objects from the library, but this was done by simply clicking to place them, and for the purposes of that tutorial, exact placement was not necessary. While this is perfectly acceptable, Vivian can also be used to create accurate, true-to-life models of events. So in this tutorial, we will explore how to accurately draw objects and how to place them at the exact locations where they need to be. Before that, however, we must understand Vivian's three-dimensional space, so that's where we'll start. Let's begin by inserting a room venue that's 80 feet wide, 60 feet deep, and 32 feet tall. Expand the pane of the quad wireframe which contains the plan view, in this case the upper left pane, in order for it to fill a larger part of the screen than the other panes. To accomplish this, move the cursor to the intersection of the four panes until it turns into a four-way arrow cross. Then, click and drag in the direction in which you wish to expand the pane. By design, the center of the floor of Vivian's room venue lines up with what is known as the document origin, or the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. This is where the three axes that define three-dimensional space, X, Y, and Z, meet. Throughout Vivian, these axes are represented in red, green, and blue respectively, and they are best seen in the virtual view by enabling its world axis option. To do this, right-click in the Virtual View, click View Options, click to check the World Axis checkbox in the General tab, and then click OK. The rulers which appear at the top of each of the quad's wireframe panes follow the same color scheme, but only two of axes appear in each pane, because these panes contain two-dimensional views of the diagram. In Plan View, which in this quad tab appears in the top left pane, we see red along the top ruler and green along the side, because X and Y are the only two working axes in this two-dimensional view. Note how when you move your cursor around this pane, only the X and Y coordinates change in the coordinates display on the status bar. In Right View, which appears here in the top right pane, we see green along the top ruler and blue along the side. Since Y and Z are the only two working axes in this two-dimensional view, while moving your cursor around this pane, only the Y and Z coordinates change in the coordinates display. Finally, in front view, which appears in the bottom left pane, we see red along the top ruler and blue along the side, indicating that X and Z are the only two working axes in this two-dimensional view. When you move your cursor around this pane, only the X and Z coordinates change. Knowing this, we can now express the width of the room as a measurement along the X axis, its depth as a measurement along the Y axis, and its height as a measurement along the Z axis. I mentioned earlier that the three axes meet at the center of the floor of the room and that this is the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. By this I mean that the middle of each axis, or its zero coordinate, is here, as you can see on the rulers. To put this into perspective, looking at the plan view on the red ruler which represents the x-axis, the room's right wall is 40 feet away from zero in the positive x-direction towards the right of the screen, while its left wall is 40 feet away from zero in the negative x-direction towards the left of the screen, for a total of 80 feet. Similarly, on the green ruler which represents the y-axis, the front wall is 30 feet away in the positive y-direction towards the top of the screen, and the back wall is 30 feet away in the negative y-direction towards the bottom of the screen, for a total of 60 feet. Looking at the side or front view on the blue ruler which represents the z-axis, the room's ceiling is at a height of 32 feet, which is in the positive z-direction towards the top of the screen. The room's floor lies at zero feet on the z-axis because height measurements always start from the floor. This event, a wedding, requires a two-tiered stage with a footprint of 36 by 16 feet. The stage is placed two feet away from the front wall of the room and its center line lines up with the room's center. 
The bottom tier of the stage is 3 feet high. The top tier is 30 feet wide, 10 feet deep, and 2 feet high. It is centered on the bottom tier, and the two tiers' backs line up. Before we begin to draw the stage, let's create a new layer for it. And make this layer current. We will draw the bottom tier using the versatile riser tool. Enter the specified dimensions and click OK to create the riser. Since specific details were provided about where the stage is to be placed, you must ensure that they are followed. This means that we cannot simply click approximately where the bottom left corner of the stage should be, but that we must enter the exact coordinate at which the riser object on the cursor will be inserted. To calculate the X coordinate, since we know the stage center line lines up with the room center line, we can simply divide the width of the stage by 2. The resulting number, 18, is the X coordinate. Before we enter this coordinate, however, we must consider what we just learned about positive and negative directions. Since we are calculating the X coordinate of the bottom left corner of the stage, because this is the corner by which the riser is being inserted, the actual value to enter is negative 18 feet. Simply type this, followed by a comma, and it will appear in the COM Edit toolbar, which will open on its own, as it just did here, if it was not already open. To calculate the Y coordinate, we proceed as follows. First, we know that the stage is 2 feet away from the front wall of the room, and that it is 16 feet deep. Therefore, the bottom side of the stage is 18 feet away from the front wall of the room. Next, we know that the front wall of the room is 30 feet from the origin in the positive y direction, so we subtract the previously calculated value of 18 feet from this. The resulting value, 12 feet, is the y coordinate at which the bottom left corner of the stage is to be inserted. Once again, simply type this value, followed by a comma. The bottom tier of the stage rests on the floor of the venue and therefore at a height of 0 feet. As such, no calculation is required for the z-coordinate. Simply type 0 for this and then press Enter to insert the riser. We will now create the top tier of the stage by using the riser tool once again. The same calculations as before can be used to determine the X and Y coordinates. To calculate the Z coordinate, we simply consider the fact that the bottom tier is 3 feet high, and that the top tier rests upon it. Therefore, the top tier's Z coordinate is 3 feet. Knowing all this, we can now type the coordinates at which to insert the riser. Negative 15 feet for X, 18 feet for Y, and 3 feet for Z. As before, the coordinates must be separated by commas, and we press Enter to insert the riser. Note that while it is impossible to tell from the plan view that the top tier was indeed placed upon the bottom tier, you can easily confirm this by looking at the side or front panes of the drawing quad. Now that we have drawn the stage, let's save our file. Next, the event requires the placement of one flower pot at each corner of the bottom tier. So let's create a new decor layer and make it current. The flower pots do not have to be placed at exact coordinates. But after selecting this object from the library, if we were to simply click to place it, it would end up on the floor of the venue, as you can see in front and side views, and as indicated by the z-coordinate display. To avoid this, we must first define the height at which to place these objects, which is done by pressing the Tab key. Enter the height, which in this case is 3 feet, the height of the bottom tier, and click OK. Now we can click to place the flower pots at the correct height. Note that the coordinates display for the z-axis has changed to 3 feet. 
It's a good idea to always look at the coordinates display in order to avoid mistakes when inserting objects at various heights. Once set, the height remains the same until you change it, so you do not have to press Tab again until you need to place an object at a different height. We will do this now in order to place three tables upon the top tier of the stage. Start by creating a seating layer and making it current. Next, calculate the height at which these tables are to be placed. 3 feet for the height of the bottom tier, plus 2 feet for the top tier. Press Tab, enter the result of 5 feet, and click OK. Select the required table from the library, then click three times to place the three tables, and right-click to finish. Do not worry about placing the tables perfectly for now. We will line them up properly later. As you've just seen, it makes no difference whether you set the height before you pick an object to insert or while you are inserting it which is what we did earlier when we placed the flower pots. Height can be set at any time, and again, it will remain as set until you change it. Let's also add a podium in the center of the bottom tier, one foot away from its front edge. Since the podium requires exact placement, we must once again enter coordinates, which by now are simple to calculate. Zero feet for X because the podium is in the center of the stage and the stage's center line lines up with the room's center line. Thirteen feet for Y because it is one foot away from the edge of the stage and we know that the front edge of the stage is at twelve feet on the positive Y axis and three feet for Z because this is the height of the bottom tier. Make the staging layer current. Select the podium from the library Type the coordinates separated by commas and press enter. Note that even though we had previously set the height to 5 feet, the podium ended up at the correct height of 3 feet on top of the bottom tier because when all three coordinates are entered for inserting an object, the specified height is ignored. It is also possible to only input the X and Y coordinates when inserting objects. When this is done, the Z coordinate is taken from the height that was set. For example, we next need to insert a balloon bouquet, which is attached to the center of the back edge of the top tier. After making the decor layer current and selecting the balloon bouquet from the library, type 0 feet for the X coordinate because the balloons are in the center of the stage, and 28 feet for the Y coordinate because we know that the back edge of the stage is 2 feet away from the back wall, which itself is 30 feet. Press Enter and the object will be inserted correctly, because we never changed the height from the 5 feet that we had set before inserting the tables earlier. Additional balloon bouquets are required to be attached to each corner of the top tier to the exact centers of its sides and to the back corners of the bottom tier. While it would be easy to calculate the necessary coordinates at which to attach the balloons, there is no need to do so because the stage object already exists. And we can use another of Vivian's features, snaps, to more easily insert them. Much like a magnet, snaps attract the object that's about to be drawn or inserted to the nearest active snap point and clicking will attach the object to that point. To insert our balloons, we require the use of endpoint snap, which allows snapping to the endpoint of any drawn line or object, as well as midpoint snap, which allows snapping to the middle point of any drawn line and most objects. Snaps are activated by clicking their buttons on the tool's toolbar. When they are active, a purple outline surrounds them, just like the outline that surrounds the view buttons. Once activated, snaps will remain active until disabled, which is done by clicking their button once again. If you are unsure about which snaps, if any, are enabled, simply look for that purple outline. Let's activate Endpoint and Midpoint Snap and select the three balloon bouquet. Move the cursor close to the end of the lower left corner of the stage in the plan pane 
And note how as soon as the cursor approaches this point, the object jumps off the cursor and attaches itself to the corner. However, if you look at the side pane, you will see that the balloon has not attached itself to the top of the riser, but rather to the bottom. This is simply how snaps work. When working on a two-dimensional view and snapping to overlapping points of a three-dimensional object, in this case the top and bottom points of the lower left corner of the top tier, the snap will always go to the bottom-most point. To overcome this, we must switch to the 3D wireframe view in order to snap to the appropriate points. Adjust the 3D wireframe if needed, move the cursor close to the point where you wish to snap to, wait for the object to jump off the cursor, and then click to insert it. Repeat this procedure for the other three corners at the top tier, and then for the middle points of its sides. Snaps can also be activated or deactivated while you are about to insert an object. For example, in order to ensure that the balloons at the back corners of the bottom tier do not accidentally get attached to the middle of its side, click the Endpoint Snap button before clicking to insert each. Note that once you click Endpoint Snap, the purple outline disappears from Midpoint Snap, but as soon as you click to insert the object, that outline appears once again. As you've observed, the height value is completely ignored while using snaps to insert objects. Once you are done inserting balloon bouquets, press enter to finish. We have now progressed far enough with the file that saving it again is a good idea. This brings us to the end of the first part of this tutorial. Part 2 will pick up right where we left off, so be sure not to miss it. Thanks for watching.